Hey guys, welcome to The Awakening. And um, today is Monday. I think it's the 4th of January and um, I'm still in my dressing gown. Uh, I had a very, very, very difficult night. I was ill all night. I don't know about you guys, but I was ill all night. And so I'm going to do my best to do an awakening with you because I, there's a couple of things I want to talk about, and that is post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, which I definitely have. Again, another it's a label, as we all know, but... Um, I definitely have got that label. And um, today it came up again, so I'm not healed. I'm definitely not healed because I was triggered very badly. And so the awakening today is gonna to be about that. I'm just gonna turn the light on and see whether this improves the picture. Thank you. Okay, so I'm back. That's a bit better, a bit more light. So yeah, so PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Remember the lesson in the Course in Miracles, you are never upset for the reason you think. So everything happens because of something that happened to you, whether it's in this life or in a past life. So um, basically, as I said, a very, very difficult night, didn't sleep at all, sick, felt sick all night. Um, the shoulder, I just, just, unbelievable anyway my husband comes around ex-husband comes around starts talking to me telling me about the, the police that they're going to be arresting me they have something from august that i did apparently in august which as far as i know usually gets wiped off a petty something or another that i'm supposed to have done i don't have a clue what it is um, remember in August, I was with the rallies and everything. And uh, so they are going to arrest me now. The minute I heard that, uh, I went into total, total panic. Went back to being seven years old, was packing my bags, started crying, started talking in Hebrew, couldn't function, told him to get out, couldn't function. Because he didn't give me the options. He didn't tell me that you need to get back to them by the 14th of January for a voluntary meeting. Now, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they want to arrest me. I've backed down with everything. As you know, I only do entertainment. Um, but I think this is a crucial time now for everyone where if you even dare to have an opinion, you have to be very, very careful now. So anyway, I lost it completely and went into a space of total seven-year-old child in Israel again, that child in the wars. And when I eventually came out of it, thanks to my beautiful Angie, thank you so much, sweetheart, who's an ex-police officer, who told me they can't, that they've got nothing on me and was really, really calming. And Sharon for being there on the line and eventually being able to get some common sense out of him, husband, um, I was able to come out of it and to calm down and to set some solutions, which we did. So I got backed into a corner. Really, I could feel it. Absolutely terrified. I'm absolutely terrified at the moment. I'm in, I'm in uh, fight and flight. I'm too scared of every tiny little noise because remember they tried to break in twice with crowbars and apparently that's wrong. I don't know what I'm meant to have done, but between you and me, it's because of what I did with moving on TV and my belief system, because that's how we're living. So I'm in total panic and fear at the moment, but as the Course of Miracles says to me, you are only, you are never upset for the reason you think, never. So I'm in fight and flight and PTSD, post-traumatic stress. I am the child that grew up in wars. I am terrified. 
I managed to make myself a cup of tea with some sugar because I was in shock. We're all in shock. Not mad, in shock. And if anyone dares say that I'm bipolar, I'm mad because of this panic of fear, then I would tell them exactly where to go. This is not mental illness. You are not mad. You are shocked, every single one of you. I feel like I'm in a huge hole of despair at the moment. Absolutely terrified. Just trying, but I have set a solution. I even rang the lawyer and they didn't know what to do. They, they put it back on to saying, they said it's voluntary, you don't have to do anything. But unfortunately, the child or the person that was thrown in a cell when they had a panic attack and, and uh, because I wouldn't bow down to them, they said, I will, we will cuff you if you don't stop crying, is here. The child and, and the person who went through that. And I can feel it in every bone of my body. And I want you to feel it with me. Feel it. Everywhere. Feel it. That human part of me feels terrified that they're going to break down the door or the window with a crowbar like they tried a few weeks ago, a month ago, because of something that apparently I did in August and they won't tell me we're now in January and everyone I've spoken to said they would have wiped that by now. So what is going on? I'm in shock. And I feel it in every cell of my body. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. This is a war. And I could be sacrificed, just like everybody else, for the children. I can feel it. I don't want to. I don't want to die. I don't want to die because I know that soon this is going to be over and we're going to have the med beds and I'm going to get a better life than I've had. We all are. But we have to go through it at the moment until then. Feel it. Feel it with me. Feel the fear, the panic, whatever is going on in your life, feel it in your big hole at the moment. Feel it, squirm with it. Feel the darkness, feel the fear, feel the panic, whatever. Is this the darkness or is this your portway to salvation, your doorway to salvation? Feel the shock they put us into. I was telling Martin everything today and he took it on board. Everything I can answer, every single question you have, ask, I will answer. I channeled everything today. Feel everything. Now it's coming out on my shoulder into my fists. Look. I feel like I want to speak Hebrew and only Hebrew. I spoke English to mum and dad, but I'm scared. I'm really, really scared. That part of Lauren is scared. Let her talk. Shall we let her talk? Let her talk. Mommy, Daddy, I'm frightened. I'm frightened. I want to go home. I want to go home to Ireland to the safety. Take me home, please take me home. I want to be safe. 
What else does she want to say? I want to be safe back with the garden, the fairies, the roses, my bedroom, with you and daddy and my sister, Iris, my neighbors, school, the brownies. I don't like it here anymore. I hate it here. I want to go home, take me home. It's okay, Lauren. It's okay to feel sweetheart. This is your good mummy now. You have a right to feel these feelings, whoever you are. Talk to that part of you. Talking to little Laura now. I want to go home. I want to go home, Mom. I don't like it here. I want to go back to Dublin to the safety. I don't want to be here in this war. I don't want to be in the war. I want to go home to Grandpa. Play the violin. I want to do the jigs and the dancing with Grandpa. I want to go home. I want to go back to my ballet and my lessons, my accordion lessons. I don't want to be in this country. I hate it. Take me home, please. Take me home. I want to be safe. Let's let our talk. Yeah, you do this. You do this. Please do it. But do this with me, guys, and share this. This is dealing with PTSD here. All right. This little Laura is ready to run. PC and Ellie, the cats. Let's pack a bag and get out of here and run and hide. I want to run and hide now. I want to go home. I want to go home to Dublin. I want I want to be safe. I want to be safe. I want to be safe. That's all she says. I want to be safe. Why can't I be safe in Dublin? I want to go home. And that's what I, Lauren, the older Lauren, started to do. Look at me. It's all coming out. Let it come out. The older Lauren, the adult, started to pack a bag. And she was running around, banging doors and screaming and packing and talking in Hebrew. Trying to get Pete and Ellie into the box. But I didn't do that. I didn't go as far as that. Protecting myself. Don't come near me. I want to go home. That's my biggest issue. I want to go home. I'm not safe. I'm not safe. I want to go back to the people that made me feel safe. People, 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 people. Nothing else but people. And that's the problem. People. People are people. People are people. People are not answering the phone. Or they do answer the phone. They can only do their best. They have their own lives. They have their own issues. We are going through hell. People can't save us anymore. This is the problem. This is the problem. Where is God? Where is that sense of peace inside, that safety? I want that. I want that. I want to feel bliss without people. I want to know. This is Lauren now, the adult, me, the teacher. I don't want to carry this child, Israel, the wars, the terrorism, the panic, the fear, the personality, the identity. Just Pure me, starseed me, starseed me, pure spirit. How do I do it? I'm doing it on a daily basis. I'm singing, I'm performing, I'm doing what I love, I'm happy. And then the trigger happens. They're going to take your safety away. They're going to arrest you. They're going to throw you away. You're going to die in the name of this war. You'll blow up, Lauren, you'll fight them. The child inside will fight and fight. You'll lose her temper. She'll scream, she'll shout. 
Not one human in this world, on this planet, can fix that. No one. Only the, where we come from. God. The light. What we're working for. Love. And I'm not yeah yet. Look at me. I'm shaking like a leaf. I'm not there. I'm not there, guys. Are you? Because if you are, then teach me. If you know how to teach me, then teach me. Please teach me. Whoever die, leaves us through this, I want to be strong. Beyond the body, beyond the suffering, I want to be strong. Can you teach me? Please teach me how to negotiate this darkness, this fear, this panic. If there's any way you can help me, not by hurting me anymore. Don't hurt me anymore. God, I've had enough of it. But if it's coming with a bonus, if it comes in a way where I'm going to be able to know, to understand, to be creative, in a creative way, is what I'm trying to say. I've been hurt so much, Lauren. I've had enough. I've had enough of being hurt. I'm doing this with you because I want you to understand how PTSD, what they did to us, they shocked us. They created wars. They created this shit that they put me into. They did that. They forced us to live in certain ways because of whatever. I wanted you to believe that that's all you've got. Fear and panic and worry. And I'm fed up with it. I want to be in bliss, safe. How do you become safe without people? How do you become safe without a home? Yes, I can meditate and feel safe while I'm meditating. Then I have to carry on, don't I? Now, the only way I know to get myself back into balance and safety, apart from singing, which I'm not going to do, because I don't feel like it at the moment, I'm exhausted, is a violet flame connected with the healing code. And that's how I've got myself out of panic time and time again. But this is much bigger than me. This is too big. This fear is too big. I've got an eviction and I've got the police. Yeah, two massive things that are literally put me into such huge panic when I think about it. And if I can find solutions and I've got solutions now, we've got solutions, Lauren. So we come back into balance. What can we do here? What can we do, all right? So how am I gonna get, I'm showing you me, now balanced, going, taking you through a process of showing you me in PTSD, you in PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which for me was caused in Israel, in the wars and, and everything else. Yeah, for you, it could be something else. It could even be past lives. It, I'm not, it doesn't matter, but it does this to us. Look. This is what it does. This is what lives inside us, in our shoulders. Feel it. This is what's living in my body. Not massage will take this out. No massage will get rid of this. This is the ascension change. All it means is that we are bringing up everything that needs to come up to release into the light. Okay? This is the darkness that lives inside us, what they forced us to live like. Look at me squirming from the suffering and the fear and the panic that not one tablet will heal this. It has to come up and a tablet will push it down into nothing. Nothing, nothing. When I sing, this is what I have in my singing. Pure, core, 
suffering. And that's why they loved Piaf. Because that's what I presented on the stage with her joy, huge core suffering. Okay, creativity. This is why you love me, whoever's on here, because I am empathize, you empathize, and I em we empathize with each other, with the suffering that is in our bodies and our minds, because the soul of the spirit is pure, cannot suffer. This is the layers and layers of years and years and years of enslavement and suffering. We are the embodiment, are literally the body is taking it all on. Look at me. Look at you, look at us. But I know that this is not me. I know this is something that can be let go of. And there is not one human that can fix it sometimes. Okay, so we sat down, we figured out a solution, a, a time scaled solution, as I said with the coaching, to postpone things, to postpone, that's all. Can you imagine how my ancestors must have felt when they were rounded up with guns everywhere? And if they said anything out of order, they would shoot them. That was it, end of. And then they put them, they didn't know what's gonna happen to them. And they put them in those ch chambers if you don't want to listen, don't listen. But this is the core of everything. They were, and they saw people dropping in front of them, being poisoned from the shower. Can you imagine what they must have felt that minute? That's what you need to feel. When they saw, they stood under that shower, which wasn't really a shower and watch their loved ones, their friends, everyone just dropping dead in front of them. And they were there. <laughs> and they look up to God and they say, why? Why have you done this? What have you done? Why are you doing this to us? <laughs> That's how I feel at the moment. That personality. <laughs> Can you imagine what it must feel like to see your loved ones going through that in front of you? I was spared that in this life, thank God, and hopefully I'll be spared it. But can you imagine what my ancestors went through and those genes, cells, went into my mum and dad particularly my mom, because it was the whole of my grandfather's family that just disappeared, never to be heard of again. Those genes were already there, but they weren't, sorry, no, let me, let me correct that. The genes weren't there, but the beliefs were and the thoughts. So that's how my mom grew up. That's how my dad grew up. That's how my grandmother, everyone. And guess what they brought to the table when there was me and my sister that was brought to the table. Everything, that's all we learned. Fear, panic. Shock, 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 shock. That was it. That's all we knew. And any one of you who was brought up in a Jewish religion or had or some kind of connection, that's what you would have been brought up with. Or black, unfortunately, the slaves, black people, that's all they did to us. That's what these whatever did to the human race. And that's what we were brought up with. And it's all inside of you. And it's all going now, thank God, I could feel, because I touched on exactly what I needed to touch on. And even if it wasn't a reincarnation, because I have had experiences of that, standing there walking in the queues, where someone's playing a violin, 
and you're just walking like the way, you know, walking into those shower cubicles. I've had um, life, I, ha I have had experiences of that when I've done silent retreats. But if it wasn't me, if it wasn't the soul that I am that reincarnated, it definitely came from all the beliefs and all the stuff that I was brought up with that was pushed into me to be full of fear, full of panic, full of suffering from the time I was born to those people as a Jew. That's all I ever heard. The Holocaust, the Holocaust, the Holocaust. So I learned. <laughs> we must never let it happen again. Never. So we stand tall and we fight. That's what Israel was. That's why I was brought up on to go in the army and to stand up and fight an innocent child that was taken from Ireland. And believe me, I know why. I know I'm a star seed and I know the reason, but the body doesn't understand, the personality doesn't understand. And that's what the work is. That's the ascension work, is to try and release all of this out of this poor shell and just be able to breathe and be peaceful. So you're, I've attracted situations in order to help that, I presume. That's what's happening here. I have to trust, I have to trust, I have to trust. But when it's down, comes down to the nitty gritty, Lauren is a Jew, Lauren is a Jewess. I grew up in a Jewish country and was taught about the Holocaust from the time she was five years old, taken to museums to see that little boy with his hands up being taken in this lip this is the most famous picture of all with bones I, I can't say it on here they'll probably cut me off but this is the picture that I was brought up with the little boy yeah in in Yad Vashem from the age of five years old well seven actually not five because he didn't go to Israel but from school that was your school outings yeah from the time you're seven the time you understand anything is pumped into you fear Panic, imagine seeing a picture of a child, not a nice little happy child with a bunny rabbit, no. A child standing like this with their hands up, preparing to, you know what? That's what I was brought up with. So how can I be any different to what I am? How can any of us be any different if this is how you were brought up and then you've got past lives and karma to deal with? And I'm not saying that this is the, you know, this is one of the worst ways to bring up a child. They are much worse. We're all products of wars and, 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 and destruction. We're shocked. None of us are mentally ill. We're all products of what they turned our world into. And I don't care what anyone says, they are not me. They are not me. And I'm prepared to stand up and, and, and it will be proved. We are light beings, human beings are not them. You have empathy in you. Yes, they can manipulate you easily. They have done for this, but you are not that pure something else that has no empathy, nothing. Does not, cannot connect to another human, hates humans. We are fodder. And again, I hope they don't cut me off for this. It's under the guise of the awakening. You have a right to see this. And so I am talking to you because today was so difficult for me. So scary. You are never upset for the reason you think. Every time you get triggered, realize this has nothing to do with today. This is coming from what, the way you were brought up, the way you were conditioned to be scared and panicky and frightened and to live like that for the rest of your life so that they could control you and do whatever they want with you, yeah? That's how you were brought up, to be their slave. And now we're waking up and now we're saying no. So we have to go through it. If you want to wake up, then this is how you've got to, you've got to face everything. You have got to face every single demon yourself in yourself if you can't face it in yourself look at those eyes 
if you can look me in the eye and face your demons, face them. Some people can look me in the eye. I see the eyes of the mirror of the soul. We are all reflecting to each other what needs to be healed now. The eyes are the mirror of the soul. Look at my eyes. Today I sat my husband down and I told him what he really is, the truth. That he is perfect, equal to everyone else, even though he chose a different journey. Not to be rich, not to be an accountant, but to work at an airport. He is just as good as everyone else. No better and no less. He was brought up to be the patch-up child. I told him because I know, because I channeled. He was brought up to be the patch-up child, the child that nearly died. And so he was never given a chance to grow up and to become responsible. But that doesn't make him any better. He was told that he was better than everyone else because he could patch up everyone's feelings. He patched up his mom and dad's marriage. But he never lived up to what they wanted him to be. And he thought he was less than, and he is not. None of you, you're all equal. Except some of us are star seeds. And our job is to come here to wake you up, to heal you. It doesn't make us, it just makes us different, not better or less. Everyone's playing a part here. It's like a big jigsaw, a massive big jigsaw puzzle. That's all, guys. Today has been really hard for Lauren. And not one human, yeah, we sat, yeah, it's not true. There were humans there helping me. Thank God, their wisdom because they're wiser than me and they knew more than me, particularly Angie, as she's an ex-police officer. So she gave me advice. But the seven-year-old screaming little child that was talking in Hebrew and couldn't function was going out there to protect herself in the dressing gown, jumping into a car. <laughs> it's my work. She's very much alive at the moment and very scared. I'm too scared to go to bed. I don't have dad with a gun under his pillow to protect me, do I? I can't make this too long because you won't watch it. But it's true, I don't have dad. Anyway, I want you to think about that, guys. This is the awakening for today. We, you have to find your own power inside of you, which I haven't done yet. Most of the time I've got it, but when it comes to big issues like being arrested or evicted, this is as close to death at the moment to me as I can get. The death of the body. So I bless you and I love you and I, I pray that you can deal the also deal with your biggest demons like I am now. I don't think sitting and meditating is the answer. Facing it is the answer and eating, don't get too hungry, too angry, too lonely, too tired is part of the answer. Making sure you get to sleep, making sure you breathe. Don't go on here and entertain tonight. Not this, not tonight. Yes, the show must go on. It always goes on. But tonight is time to feel. Let the little child feel. Let her be in her hole, in her abyss. Let her squirm. Let her feel all the pain. Let her bring it up. Give her a chance to feel and feel and heal and feel and heal. This is a very, very, very poignant awakening 137 I think feel and heal guys feel and heal let me know how you're getting on with your ascension I haven't got past this yet I can get live a very good day-to-day -day life 
but honestly, this pushes me, triggers me into parts I need to feel. But I know what will happen to me if I go any near, anywhere near that lot. I know exactly what they're doing because of the interviews I've done. And so I know I'm protecting myself. But as you could see, I want to be safe. And to me, safe means Ireland. To me, safe safety net means being with friends, meditating, hugging, connecting, dancing, singing. That's safety. But what happens when that is all stripped away as it has been? And they're here. You have to create solutions. And so I'm coming up with solutions. You don't run because you're just going to, if you run, well, yeah, sometimes you have to run. And so I have to create some support systems to run to. I have to think about it. But hopefully in a few weeks, by the end of the month, this will be over. We'll be moving towards real salvation. No human deserves to live like this. You do not deserve to live like this. No one deserves to live like this. I love you. Take care. And tonight I'm putting on loads of healing modalities. So enjoy the healing. I'm moving on TV. I love you. Bye-bye.